Yo, yo, what's going on, guys? Your boy, Jamie Woods, back at it again with another video. And guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification. Make sure you hit that like button. Share it with your baby mama. Share it with your baby daddy. Share it with your son, your father, your mother, whomever. Share the message, guys. I definitely will appreciate that. But anyways, guys, let's get straight to the point, guys. Of course, if you viewed the title, today we're going to be going over why nightclubs have been dying. Now, we're going to be talking about what happened after 2020 because I feel like night close before 2020, I mean, it was slowly dying, but it, it's it's gotten drastic since 2020. I mean, you guys can look up the stats. You can even go to your favorite club and you can notice it's not the same like it used to be. Now, COVID, the pandemic also played a part in this, guys. I mean, that's pretty obvious. A lot of people nowadays are more introverted. They're more homebodies because of the pandemic. They've gotten people very used to being in the household and just doing things from the house or doing things nearby. Nobody really wants to go out to the clubs. Everyone's kind of German phobic. So yes, there's that obvious reason that does play a part into why nightclubs have been dying. But I want to go over some other points here, right? So let's get it started. You can meet people from the comfort of your home. You don't need to get outside your crib nowadays in order to meet your future wife or your future husband. But back then in the 2000s and the 90s and the 80s when nightclubs were at their height, the thing was at the time, cell phones weren't a thing, social media dating apps weren't a thing, so it forced people to get out there to meet people. That was the only way you could meet people back then, guys. It wasn't like you can just lay in your couch, download Tinder or Bumble or Hinge and swipe, swipe, swipe and meet someone. No, if you wanted to meet someone and, and have a wife, have a husband, well, guess what? You had to go to the nightclubs. You had to go to the bar. That was their Tinder and their Bumble back then, okay? Their Tinder and Bumble wasn't swiping on people. It was approaching people to go talk to them, to introduce themselves and see where it goes from there. So it was much different back then. Nowadays, with the introduction of dating apps and social media, what's really the incentive of really going out to the clubs and the bars anymore? I mean, sure, it's good to meet people in person, but there's a lot of people like, okay, what really is the point? You know, I have to get ready and that takes a while. I have to drive on over or pay for an Uber to go over there, wait in a long ass line, go in a dirty, hot ass freaking club, sweating my ass off to meet women or meet a man. What is really the point when I could just be on my couch, swipe, 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 ding, Hit them up. Oh, let's meet up in the. Let's meet up in, in in the restaurant. Let's meet up here. Let's meet up at the park. And that's it. You know what I mean? It's a lot more simpler to meet people nowadays than what it was before. So this, in a way, is hurting nightclubs because the big thing with the nightclubs was okay, you could meet your future wife or your future husband in the nightclub. Nowadays, you could meet them digitally. You could meet them over your phone. Another thing I want to add on to that. This is kind of like an add-on is that nowadays people are starting to realize that, yeah, there's other ways that we can meet people. So what I mean is with the Passport Bros movement and all these other movements that are going on, people are like, yeah, man, I'm kind of getting tired of what's around locally. Because for the most part, guys, when you go out to nightclubs, sure, you're going to see new faces and stuff like that. But a lot of the people you're going to meet are local. They're local women they're local men. A lot of people are kind of tired of what's around them at the moment. The dating scene in America specifically has gotten so toxic where people don't even want to go out to the nightclubs to meet girls because they view that it's not going to be worth it down the line anyway. It's just going to be like, all right, you're going to talk to them for a week. They're going to disappear. And that's it. You'll never hear from them again. So a lot of guys are like, all right, instead of me wasting my money to go to the nightclub and meet a woman that may or may not work out for me or a man that may or may not work out for me, why don't I just take my talents somewhere else to a different country where I can meet women that actually are down for me, that actually like me, that actually I might have a long-term thing with. So people are starting to realize, all right, instead of me going out to the club to meet these local girls or local men, let me save up that money and go travel and do something and see new places and actually meet cool people in other places. You know, nowadays people want to meet different type of people with different accents and different beliefs and different perspectives and all that. So nowadays the Passport Bros movement has kind of in a way, not saying in, you know, in a huge way, but it has impacted a little bit of what's going on with the local nightclubs. And on top of traveling, guys, guys and girls are also realizing, okay, I could meet guys in an event. I could meet guys at a festival. I could meet guys in other different ways. I don't just have to go to the nightclub or just have to go to the bar to meet people. 
A lot of the time, guys, when you meet a girl or when you meet a man at the nightclub, it usually doesn't work out. A lot of the time, they're just there for a one-night stand. They're just there to have fun. Or maybe they're just there for attention. Or they're just there because they were forced to go there. Maybe they're not like an extrovert or a nightclub person, but they're forced to go for their girls or their, their guy's birthday. So they have to pretend to be having fun. They really don't want to be there. And they're not really there to look for people. They're just there because they were forced to be there. So a lot of the reasons as to why people go to nightclubs, especially nowadays, it isn't as pure as it used to be where back then people went out for a good time and to meet someone. Nowadays, people are just going there for the attention seeking. They're going there because, you know, they're trying to get a one night stand or they're trying to hook up with a chick or hook up with a dude or whatever the case is. The reasons as to why people go to nightclubs nowadays aren't pure and genuine like it used to be. So because of this, a lot of people are like, what is the point of me going out to a nightclub if all I'm going to meet is a hoe or a dude that like is a F boy or it's not going to work out. They're just going to ghost me anyway. So what is really the point when I'd rather just meet a girl in Comic Con that has similar interests to me that I can actually do something with long term or I can fly on over to Colombia, Brazil, where I can meet a dime that will actually be down for me and be feminine and submissive in all these key terms, you know what I mean? Another big reason, guys, is it's just too damn expensive, especially as a man. Now, with girls, not saying that you girls aren't paying for things. I've seen girls pay for entrance fees. I've seen girls pay for drinks and hookah. I've seen girls pay for everything. Nowadays, girls make a lot of money. They spend money. I get that. However, for the most part, there's going to be a man paying for your shit. There's going to be a man paying for your drinks. The, you know, entrance fees are for free. You don't really have to even wait on the line because a lot of these promoters and these people, especially if you're a very good looking girl, they have you skip the line to get in as soon as possible. All right. So it's kind of like an easy time for you as a woman where, you know, you're not breaking your bank or you're not wasting that much time. It's kind of simple for you. But as a man, there's a lot that goes into it, all right? So now you have to figure out how to get to the club, all right? So it's either you drive there, so that's gas money, or someone else takes you, like a friend, that's gas money, or you pay an Uber, and these Ubers, you know, to and from can get a little bit pricey, especially coming out of the club, because they know, you know, usually Uber picks up on the hot spots where a lot of people won't be at and they rank up the prices. OK, so you have to pay for that. Now, another thing is you have to pay to get in. I paid one time, guys. I literally paid 50 bucks to get in and I was forced to do it because it was my boy's birthday. And I didn't want to be that guy. I was like, oh, I don't want to pay this. You know, it was my boy's birthday. I didn't want to ruin the night. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'll pay the 50 bucks. So sometimes you may have to pay up to 50 to get in. Now, another thing, guys, is let's just say you're like the credit card, debit, debit card type of guy like me, for example, right? I usually never take out money when I go out. I just use my card because I'm lazy. I don't feel like going through the ATM fees and all that shit, right? So I take my debit card. A lot of these clubs, what they do, guys, they're, they're slick with it. What they do is they, make, they, they have a uh, $50 minimum. So you have to spend up to $50 that night, sometimes even higher, in order for them to even swipe your card. So let's just say you're not trying to spend that much. You're like, you know what? Let me go to the ATM and take out money. All right, you go to the ATM and take out money, and guess what happens? $10, $12, depending where you're at. In New York City, sometimes it could be up to $15 ATM fee, okay? So on top of the money you're taking out, they're also going to take out $15 for the ATM fee, bro. So either way, guys, a minimum night out, so because these drinks, guys, these drinks are like $10 each, depending where you're at, especially if it's a big city. You're spending 10 to 15 sometimes. The hookahs are expensive. If you meet a girl, guess what? You're going to feel somewhat forced to buy her a drink. You're going to, you know, guys are gentlemen. They're going to want to buy a girl a drink, and I get that. You know what I mean? You don't want to be a cheap steak either, but that's another, uh, another expense right there. And these cocktails can get a little pricey, guys. Now, the food afterwards, if you're going to take her out somewhere afterwards for food or if you're going to take yourself out for food, that's money, too. So literally, guys, and parking, I didn't even go over parking, guys. You're wasting money on parking, too. So if you put all these things up together, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some other expenses over here. If you add all of this up, guys, you're literally looking at one hundred dollars minimum minimum, guys. All right. If you times that. So if you're the type of guy to go out twice or three times a week, you're spending up to close to 300 minimum a week, two to 300 minimum a week, depending how much you go out, all right? If you times that times each single week, because there's, there's some guys that go out every single week. If you times that times four, 
Bro, you're almost looking at a thousand or a thousand plus you're spending. That money could have literally been saved for something else. It could have been saved for a house. It could have been saved for traveling. It could have been saved for other things. And people are starting to realize, all right, why would I spend all this money, not get any girls, all right? So you buy a girl a drink, things are going good. She's like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom or my friend's over there. I got to go real quick. I'll be back though. Ne never ends up coming back. So not only did you spend all that money, but you didn't get lucky. You didn't meet anyone. So now you're coming out there broke and depressed, all right? Which are the two worst feelings a man can feel, broke and depressed because you got nothing, all right? At least if you were broke, but you walked out with a girl, it wouldn't be that bad. But the thing is, guys, nightclubs are for the rich. The ones that get lucky, the ones that get the girls, the ones that get the girls' attention are the rich. The ones in the VIP table, okay? Those are the ones that have the best time. They have somewhere to sit. They have a section. If they like a girl, hey, come over to the VIP table. I got some hookahs. I got some drinks. I got some money. Of course, girls love that shit. They're going to go over. They the ones that are going to get lucky. Not us poor folk over here that go there to have a fun time. Not us. So guys are starting to realize that, all right, what's the point of me going if, one, I'm going to be broke, two, I'm not going to get lucky, three, the girls that I like are going after the rich guys. But what is really the point? I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my energy. I'm wasting my money. I'm wasting everything. So guys are starting to pick up on that. Now on the girl side, a lot of girls are also getting fed up in the clubs because one, they're meeting a lot of F boys. Number two, they're meeting a lot of douchebags. All right. So they go in there to meet douchebags. Men can be a little bit thirsty and annoying and they're probably fed up with that. It's like, oh, I just came over here to have a good time and all these men are sweaty men are coming up to me and they're being thirsty and creepy and they're stalking me and it could be a little bit dangerous as a woman or even as a man. Like there's a lot of dudes that go out here with bad intentions and sometimes people don't know how to handle their liquor. So as soon as they start drinking, they don't know how to handle their liquor. So why would I as a man or even a woman go out to a club, get ready, drive over there, spend all that money just to put yourself in a situation where you're going to walk out lonely, you're going to walk out depressed, or you might put yourself in a dangerous situation because some people really don't know how to handle their liquor. Some people act crazy when they get out of the bar or the club. It's like, what really is coming out of this that's positive, all right? And people are starting to pick up on that and they'd rather just do other things and spending money on other things like, you know, saving up for a house, saving up maybe for a car if that's something that you want you know, saving up their travel. People would rather do other things. And to add on to that, with the passport bros moving, people are starting to pick up, bro, I can travel to Colombia. I can travel to Brazil and other places where the US dollar runs deeper. So I can literally have a night that's 10, 100 times better than, than the night that I would over here in the States. You know, it's gonna be more fun. I'm gonna have the type of woman that I want and I'm spending a fraction of the price. All right, so guys are starting to pick up on that. They'd rather save their money to travel and have fun overseas or somewhere else than spend their money locally where it's gonna be more expensive and you're not gonna get lucky. So which one would you rather have? So ladies and gentlemen, those are just a couple reasons why nightclubs are dying. Now, I'm sure there's a ton of other reasons why this is going on and why the numbers are down compared to other years. But of course, for time's sake, I just wanted to keep it to a couple, guys. But listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, subscribe, all that good stuff, guys, all right? And I'll see y'all next time. Let's get it, boy.